Investment quality, 80s, badass, cool factor, and legendary reliability, robust trans slapping in gear. This is the bike that all the drag race performance machines, even till today, are built on this set of cases right here. This is a classic Suzuki GS 1100, the big boy, triple disc brakes, chain drive, flat seat profile. This is the bike. Started it all in the 80s, a super, super bike craze praised by many. Dual overhead cam, I mean, come on guys. This pod filters with the Vance and Heinz. Exhaust, that crisp exhaust note. A few things I'd like to Sunday about rider. This bike. Uh, you know, I think the fact that this was three time Cycle World Superbike of the Year, 81, 82, and 83. This is the first year model. This bike is the 1980 model. It was derived originally from the Suzuki GS750, and they built this bike. Not only did it get Cycle World Superbike of the Year for three years in a row, back to back to back, but Cycle Guide also actually listed this as one of the landmark motorcycles of the 80s. It was the first Japanese motorcycle re-engineered and redesigned off the GS, off a lighter, smaller bike into a big bore with handling and lightweight being the number one key engineer ingredients when they, when they built this bike, starting with the lightweight aluminum swing arm, the long travel front forks, the triple disc brakes, all the things Kenny mentioned about it. This is actually also, the 1999 Rider Magazine ranked this motorcycle, the GS1100E, this exact bike here, the fifth most significant, the fifth most significant motorcycle of the last 35 years. I should have told you that without reading the silly article. Well, you know, it's it's kind of cool to have that kind of pedigree. And this came from local collector Paul and Nick Morissette uh, had a, a large collection of motorcycles that we've purchased most of most of the most of their collection already, uh, most of the real nice ones. And Nick wanted to keep this one for himself, but business has been tough for them this, this year, so they sold some of their prized possessions to us. They owned a lot of motorcycles, like I said, over 40 bikes. So they went through this one. Um, in f the, the date code on the tires, four years ago, these tires were put on it. They're brand new Michelin. Um, now they, they didn't ride the motorcycle after they built it, so these tires literally have maybe uh, 10 miles on them. Michelin Pilots on the rear and the Michelin Pilot on the front. The bike was taken apart and repainted this absolutely gorgeous uh, jet black color. It has a Vance and Heinz exhaust on it. The, car, the whole fuel system has been rebuilt on it. The Obviously, with 12,000 miles, mechanically, it didn't need anything. Nothing was worn out on it. But they cleaned the tank out, took the carbs off, put the k pod filters on there, and a dyno jet kit. So it's jetted for the Vance and Heinz 4 into one exhaust. Give me the mic real quick. This, the uh, corner profile, like on the side of the Vance and Heinz, like the 4 one just comes underneath the motor the, <laughs> where all the pipes join in. This is a side profile, the dual overhead cam, and just the way that the motor's set up. It just This thing looks ridiculous. speaks for itself this bike is rated for 134 mile per hour top speed which is moving i don't know if you've ever been that fast on a bike fastest i've ever been was 145 on a ducati and that is fast with no fairing at 134 you better be tucked down tight on it rated for 105 horsepower stock this has probably got 10 15 horsepower more than stock being tuned with the dyno jet kit and opened up intake and exhaust rated at 11.39 seconds in the quarter mile at 118 miles per hour 0 to 60 at 4.3 seconds. It's a four valve per cylinder, double overhead cam, five speed, four cylinder, inline four, Japanese bullet. It's got the uh, aluminum swing arm, as I mentioned earlier, triple disc brakes, and again, Psycho World's, World's Super Bike of the Year. So this is a bike that set the standard and was considered one of the last most significant bikes in the last 35 years. It has the Suzuki TSCC, that stands for Twin Swirl Combustion Chamber. Center stand is intact, as is the side stand. Nice, wide, flat seat. Pete Baccarosa from Superbike Universe has a huge collection of bikes. He had took his 1100 out of here. And matter of fact, you see this right here? This big this big circle on the uh, last year. If you look at this, it's a circle. And then there's an eyeball, an eyeball, and a smiley face that he put on here. He did that on his GS1100. He, hadn't, he had owned it since it was new. And as us, it was in the museum for years and he wanted to ride it. So he cleaned the carbs, got it going. He came down here, did a massive circular hole shot. Pizza retired AMA Superbike Pro in own Superbike Universe. He's a, still can ride with the best of them. Gets on the bike, does a three gear 12 o'clock wheelie all the way up the street. 
takes off for 10 minutes, comes back with a huge smile on his face, and he goes, I'm taking this thing for the summer. So he took, out of all the bikes he owns, he took his 1100E, same exact bike as this, set up the same exact way for him and his wife to ride all summer. And this is a guy who showed up at our grand opening with three half a million dollar supercars. He had a four-wheel turbo Porsche, a Ferrari, and a Lamborghini. He had like $1.5 million in new cars. And what bike does he ride? This one, okay? So no matter how much money you have, um, this is still going to be one of the most fun bikes you can ever ride. And this is, that's what it's all about, fun. No joke. I mean, Pete, Pete's got some unicorn homologation-only super bikes. I mean, even, even in our collection, but when, when it comes down to something that you're going to take and, and ride and enjoy, um, I, I mean, we've got a, the uh, West Cooley GS we kept in the showroom for, for a couple months that Senior was riding. Um, and, uh, I mean, it, it, it just getting down to basics, guys. Chain drive. 1100 just mounts a torque down bottom. It, it will wheelie very easily. Um, it just so happens that this is one of the ones that wasn't smashed on or crashed. Just going over some of the stuff we, we've done to it uh, since we got it from Nick's collection. It has a brand new Uwasa battery. Uh, didn't need it, but we changed the oil. Brand new 1040 maxim, maximum oil. Um, drain, the, drain the gas out, put fresh VP, non-ethanol fuel in it. Uh, the battery wasn't charging at 13.7 at volts, so um, we put a brand new Rick's Motorsports regulator rectifier in there. That's a hundred dollar part and brand new OEM Suzuki plug wires and coils. So um, new plugs, new coils, new plug wires, carbs are sorted out. It's got a beautiful Vance and Heinz on it. Um, then it went into the detail shop. It was in the service shop for six hours. Then it was in a detail shop. Doc went through it for six and a half hours. He hand washed it rather than power wash it. It was too clean to power wash. So he hand washed it, the entire bike, soap and water and degreaser. All the painted parts on the bike were buffed in wax. The motor was polished. Aluminum on the motor was polished. Uh, a little bit of ch uh, chassis touch-up. Uh, touch-up paint was put on the black chassis. Uh, touched up the wheels a little bit. Um, painted the side stand and the center stand and polished the exhaust pipe. If you look at the fork lowers, he polished aluminum on the fork lowers in the front. Gave it a full rotisserie top to bottom detail. It took him an entire, well, six and a half hours, almost a full day. So it's ready to go. New tires, brakes have been serviced, carbs are done. It needs nothing but a new rider to go out and ride this off in the sunset this summer. So again, 12,000 miles, um, which is really nothing. These engines are good for half a million miles. It has brand new Motion Pro grips on it and a new set of Superbike bars uh, and new levers on it also. And the mirrors are also new. So all the controls are new and refreshed. Uh, the paint is excellent on it. It was painted a few years ago. It does have a slight ding in the tank right here, which I didn't notice this until the bike had been here a couple months, and you probably haven't noticed it yet. It kind of blends in with the bar back. You don't really see it, but I want to point out that it has that there. And then a little testicle bump right here, a little tiny uh, uh, bump. Somebody, I don't know, dropped something on it. So other than that, she's beauty. Oh, new, has a new seat cover on it too a few years ago. We have a painless, painless uh, dent removal expert contact that, uh, that can remove those two dents. For you, we're just selling the bike as is in an attempt to keep the price lower and more attractive for for potential buyers. So you can get on this thing, get it shipped to your doorstep, message us your zip code for a quote, and jump on it at the least possible price and just start shredding the canyon. On it. Yeah, for just the work we did came out to uh, 1125 in labor 231 in parts and then shot $15 in shop supplies so it came to $1,464 um, that didn't include everything that Nick and his dad did they did a couple thousand dollars worth of work too with the tires the carbs and everything else they did so over three thousand dollars where the preservation services have been done on it it needs nothing everything works the way it's supposed to <laughs> Turn signals work beautifully, front and rear, of course. So, brake lights. If you have any questions about it, give us a call. I'm gonna go do a, my favorite part of the job. I get to do a demo. See, look how new these tires are. They put them on four years ago, but they had it in their own private museum. They still got the nub on it. It's not been ridden, brand new tires. I mean, we've we've got low mileage examples with original tires on them from 30 years ago that that the tires aren't even started to dry rot. So, fact of the matter is they're stored correctly. Tires are still sticky. Still got the nubs on them in a museum. I mean, it, it's day coded four years ago. So they're day coded four years ago, but 
I mean, ride the thing cross country, their tires are perfect, still sticky and still exactly how you want them. I'm gonna go send it. I'm gonna drive by on it. I'll drive it out if you want. Got the passenger pegs if you want to ride your girlfriend or your wife. We'll say, uh, I think the left side passenger peg. Oh. If you're gonna ride two up, this is the ultimate bike. It's got plenty of power. You're never gonna feel like you need more horsepower than this unless you're, you know, I don't know, pro drag racer or something. Just a kick-ass machine. You can see why this was voted Super Bike of the Year three times. Super smooth, tons of power, a lot of torque, very flexible power range. You can lug it along at 2,000 RPM or rev it to 9,000. Great handling bike. It kind of feels like a 750, but it's got 1,100 power. Super smooth, handles great, nice weight, lightweight aluminum swing arm. Just a fantastic piece. Long travel front forks, sticky triple disc brakes. What a machine, what a day I've had. Got to ride two classic CZ250s, Red Rocket CR250, the GS1100, a CBR600, just been a great day. I don't even remember the six bike I rode, but I rode six today. Just a great day, I love my job. Bikes are starting to come out. People are out having fun, enjoying the nice weather. Nice Springer. <coughs> I really like the seating position on this bike. You're nice and upright comfortable you're not all bent over like on a Hayabusa I had a Hayabusa but um you know it's you're bent over the whole time the pressure's on your on your wrist unless you're doing 90 miles an hour and I can't afford to lose my license so this is a bike you can cruise around town <coughs> fly under the radar but when you get out in the open road you can send it and the handle's good enough to take out on a track if you wanted to bring it to a track day and Stretch his legs a bit, legally. 12,661 miles. That's like one year's worth of use by a normal rider, you know? This thing's 40 years old. Hard to find him with low miles like this.
Michelin tires are nice and sticky. Ride super nice. I love the way the exhaust sounds when you're coming off the revs. The purrs, the purrs are like kitten. Very nice. Jetting's on point. Brakes are perfect. Chains and sprockets. This thing need, needs nothing. Just needs someone to ride it. Needs a daily rider. Or roll it back into your museum if you want an investment quality piece. This one's perfect. And affordable. And fun. What else can you ask for? Mirrors are really nice. Bars, levers, mirrors on point. Good luck finding a nicer one. This thing's tight. What are you doing? Fantastic. I love it. Where are you going? I gotta go. I'm going to check into the freezer. What about the ones that, uh, what about those chickens, uh? I got them right here. Oh. Oh. I'm going to take them some home tonight. Okay, my guess. All right. Well, that was fun. Oh, just grabbed it by the seat instead of the rail here. Good luck bidding on it. If you have any questions, give us a call. Definitely Kaplan America approved. What a great bike. Hey guys.